Hey, what's up everyone? I'm John Herringer, the Chief Motivator over here at Method 3 Fitness, and I'm back with another digital learning experience all about the dangers of crash dieting. And uh, this one's specifically all about how to improve the way you eat. So I'm here with uh, my special guest, Michelle Marinzi, mm -hmm. who is a registered <laughs> dietitian and a nutrition coach here at Method 3 Fitness. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Thank and, you. And uh, well, let's talk about crash dieting. So okay. I think first, even better if we back up and talk about just first what is crash dieting? Right. Okay. So great questions. So crash dieting is basically reducing your amount of calories in a short amount of time and it's unsustainable long term. So what that means is a lot of different things to different people. So mm -hmm. crash dieting to you might be three days of of eating cayenne pepper and water and right. i've seen that diet right right uh, crash dieting to me might mean i won't crash diet but i've seen people have cabbage soup for for 10 days i remember that one cabbage do you soup. remember the old cabbage soup one yeah or it could be longer it could be a couple weeks and it could be a pre-packaged powder that you you add water to and have for two weeks right so it really varies so there's a lot of different styles of crash dieting, if you yes. will, out there. Yeah. So yes. for those of you watching, I think the key is just understanding that crash dieting can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. The The main connection, I think, between all of them, like you said, is that it's trying to reduce... It's a drastic reduction in your calories mm -hmm. for a certain time frame, short time, but it's unrealistic. It's unsustainable long term. Got it. So that's a crash diet. Okay, perfect. So... So, and... What, why do people, uh, yeah. yeah, why would people crash diet? Yeah, exactly. I think that's uh, what I'm getting. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I have some understanding. I'm trying, I was trying to think of how to phrase that, but yes, oh, okay. simply okay. put, why would people do it? So I see two main reasons why people crash diet. So the first one is you have a big event coming up. You're going on a tropical trip or you have a wedding coming up. And while you may have had six months to plan for it, people, time goes by and all of a sudden you have a week. So you crash diet to get ready for that event. So oh, that's, yeah. that's yeah. one area. Yep. Second area is uh, a lot of people will go on a diet, lose weight, and then they'll gain it. Then they'll lose weight and they'll gain it on the next diet. We, we call them yo-yo dieters. These people crash diet because it's motivating, because they lose weight. You'll mm -hmm. lose body water in a short amount of time until they try their next diet. So those are the two main groups of people that usually crash diet. Gotcha. And unfortunately, so, I think you know the the problem with these these two like main groups. And I think we've you know some of us, maybe not all of us, have experienced uh, firsthand a little bit of those getting ready for an event or just trying to lose a few pounds or something. Yes. But I think the main key is is just understanding like well, the more you keep procrastinating like that for these events, you may experience a little short term gain. But who knows even how long that gain is? I mean, it could be, oh, I'm going to get ready for this event. <laughs> exactly. Well, if it's a vacation, your 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 loss of pounds or whatever it may be, maybe you realized for like a day or two of your seven day exactly. vacation, and then right. you're right back to where you started. Right. Exactly. Um, and I think for a lot of exactly. people, it's and then some. Like the the yo yo yes, crash dieters. They do. They gain more. My, exactly. They lose right. and then they gain more. Which which brings us to I think our next little topic of okay, so that's why people do it those couple of reasons. We know what it is, what the, the main premise of it is, why yes. people do it. Yes. Um, and then why do people ultimately fail with these as it relates to like achieving certain goals? Right, right. Well, okay, so it's not realistic to go on a crash diet because you're not learning how to change your unhealthy eating habits. You're not learning what put you in that spot in the first place. So it's almost like you're on autopilot when you're on a crash diet because you're just not eating. So right. you are losing weight, but it will come back because you haven't changed anything. You haven't changed your habits. Um, another thing is there is very isolating to go on a crash diet. You can't go out to eat. You can't eat with your family and it's not very supportive. I probably wouldn't announce to my friends and family. So for the next five days, I'm going to have cayenne pepper and water. So can you support me? <laughs> I mean, it's just not a realistic thing. Yeah. So they don't last. It's it's a very temporary thing. So, and I think the part of that. So, I, so I love the things you talked about there. So it's it's isolating, uh, and that yes. all of a sudden, and I think all these things lead to it's it's downfall, right? And yes. that it's, So yes. it's 
Well, let me start with where you started. So it's it's not sustainable, and I would totally agree right. because who's going to just drink water and lemon and cayenne pepper forever? Yes. It's just that, <laughs> that's not even you won't be able to live probably after you know. So no. And then past that, um, it's not a lot of them cabbage soup or whatever it is. You're so restricted, you know, to be able to lose this short term yes. weight and whatnot. Yes. Uh, that there's just there's no way you're going to be able to continue it day by day, week by week after this finite period of time. Right. And that's right. what I've noticed is that people will grind it out for a week, two weeks, three weeks, maybe even upwards of five or six weeks because yes. there's this end in sight. Yes. And they're like, well, I can do anything for this much time. <laughs> but to your point, uh, it's super isolating. It's super restricted. They feel like they can't do so much other stuff, right. which I think also besides the fact that the actual eating plan, whatever it may be, is just not the very, very well rounded and yeah. very rigid. Yeah. Um, besides that, it's so isolating and they feel restricted in so many ways. They yeah. don't want to continue it. Probably not. Right. I mean, it's one of those yeah. things where Probably I got my, my short term success. I kind of got what I wanted out of it and it was a horrible process, <laughs> but I'm there. Great. Made it. And now, and, and I think the, 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 uh, the, the dream almost that they keep telling themselves is just like, oh, okay, well, once it's over, I'll still right. maintain some of those healthy habits, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. the unfortunate part is that I think most studies show that that does not happen. Absolutely. Right. That's what research shows with crash diets. They gain it back. Absolutely, 100%. Gotcha. They gain it back. It's just not realistic. So that actually is a good thing to go into how you feel. Yeah. So the effects of crash dieting. Right. So before I tell you about the effects, I just want to ask you, have you ever had a day where you get up and have breakfast, which I know you eat extremely early, Yes. and then the day gets by and it's all of a sudden five o'clock, but you still want to go do an hour workout. You want to, you need to do homework with your kids. How do you feel? Yeah. Physically. Uh, I mean, how do you, do I don't you, feel that great physically and I feel probably kind of stressed out at that point. Yeah. Right. Okay. So those are, I mean, those are the symptoms you start to feel when you crash diet short term, you, you have no energy and actually crash dieters increase their con consumption of caffeine mm -hmm. because they're trying to have the energy. Right. Um, you risk being dehydrated. Uh, your immune system actually is suppressed when you're not eating. So you're more prone to colds. These are almost just short-term things. You're probably but angry, probably a little hangry. You get there, angry. Yeah. Yes, you have. You can't concentrate. I mean, all these things come up. Yeah. Short term, and then long term, if you do a crash diet and have such a reduced amount of calories for a longer period of time, then you risk nutrient deficiencies, becoming anemic. Bone mineral loss. Bone mineral yeah. loss. Osteo. Yeah, lots of stuff. Yeah. A lot of um, other things, and then the primary thing is your metabolism slows down. So your bodies are amazing machines and, and we get used to how many calories we consume, give or take. And so when you drastically reduce it, you almost go into a starvation mode. And so your body dives into the stores, your excess stores, and will use them. And it'll figure it out. So then you go back to feeding your body a larger amount of calories. Well, it doesn't need it. It doesn't need to use it, so it stores it. So you're, you're slowing your metabolism down, if that yeah. makes sense. Yep, it's just yep, yep. not efficient. Right. There's only so much that's going to dive into so, certain stores or body fat stores. Exactly. And, and if it's too low, it's going to probably start depleting muscle tissue. It's going to probably it it start will. grabbing yeah. things from your organs or the things well, as well. It can damage your heart. I mean, yeah. it can just go on and on. A multitude of risks. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. crash dieting obviously is not for pregnant women, right. uh, kids. And if you have a health condition and you're on medications, don't crash diet. It's just, it plays havoc on your body I'm sure. when you're taking certain things. Especially certain with, yeah, in conjunction medications. with the, yeah, the medications. So, and, Absolutely. And I think, you know, uh, uh, another thing that I've realized as I've, uh, again, done other research into this or just, just yes. witnessed people is, well, as you're going on this crash diet and you lose some of the weight, you lose some water weight, you may you lose, lose some fat weight. Water. You'll lose, some, <laughs> you'll lose some muscle weight possibly along the yes. way. And yes. the problem is, is when you're gaining weight back, you're not really necessarily gaining the muscle weight that you lost. You're most right. likely just gaining body fat. So now you start this yo-yo yes. where every yes. time you crash diet, you slowly start to lose more and more exactly. lean body mass as well. Right. And that's completely defeating the purpose of trying to be, be able to maintain or sustain this, especially as you yes. know, Michelle, with the keeping our metabolism in some way, shape or form uh, at, a, at a good level, right? Right. Because if I'm consistently right. losing body mass, lean body mass at least, muscle tissue, 
which yeah. has a more of an active, you know, uh, calorie burn associated with it, mm -hmm. then my metabolism is slowly but surely going down. Right. So, um, you know, it's not to say that we can't have a time or period in between meals, but it shouldn't be starving yourself either in between or with such low calories that we're really not giving right. our body what it needs to perform the way we want it to perform. Um, right. Okay, good. So we and, got some, yeah. so just, just bad news, this whole crash <laughs> dieting thing. Well, it's bad news. It's tough. I mean, even if you went three days on this low diet because you wanted to fit into a dress, you're not going to feel very good when you're in that dress mm. because you haven't eaten in three days or whatever you're doing. So right. it, it's a, it's a cycle thing. That's yeah. not a good thing. Well, not and I a think, good thing. uh, to speak more to the, to the mental part of it is as you, if you start to engage in these cycles of crash dieting, not only is it wreaking havoc on your body, like you just mentioned, and it's got so many different short term and long term ramifications that can be damaging to your body. I think it's also damaging to your psyche. Because you're, you're literally getting yeah. this like this crazy yo-yo where you have so many different emotions that are arising where it's like, I'm going to go on a crash diet. Here we go. I'm motivated. <laughs> cool. I lost some weight, but I'm kind of angry right. and frustrated and I feel crappy during this thing, but it's okay. Right. I'm going to get through it. And then yeah. you get through it and then you gain it back. And it's just this whole cycle of probably how many things are happening in your body chemically to, to you know, your anger, you're frustrated, your lack yeah. of energy during this yeah. thing. Oh, and but you, you still should go work out. Right. And then you, you still get should the go work out. Result, you feel a little bit better, <laughs> but then you end up gaining the weight back. And then that makes you feel even more probably yeah. depressed. Right? right. And now you've got, you've got so many things that are surrounding this that are just not good. I think the other uh, part of it is that, as you mentioned before, is that none of this is really changing the actual habits or behaviors exactly. behind exactly. me. And that's, that's the, the ultimately the most important thing, right? Yes. I think that's the big yes. thing that we ultimately try to teach is like, look, we're going to, we're going to coach you as best we can on this, but our goal is to educate you, you in method three, right? right? To teach you because yes. if we can help support you, hold you accountable to a degree to implement these, these good behaviors and actions into exactly. your lifestyle, exactly. then it becomes something that's sustainable, right? right? Then all of a sudden, maybe it takes you a little bit longer to achieve the success you want, right. but it's success that sticks, yes. right? And it's so, having patience, yes. right? I mean, yep. patience is tough because you know, if you want to lose, right, if you want to yep. lose 10, 20, 30 pounds, I guarantee you didn't gain 20, 30 pounds in three days. So you're not going to lose it in three days. Mm -hmm. So have patience, practice every day, yeah. find an eating plan that works for you, that you, that you learn new eating habits. So you don't go backwards, just keep going forwards with your new habits and practice, practice, practice. That's I, what I talk I say. about patience literally in, um, in, meetings with prospective clients of method three yes. and i talk about that as one of the failures for people because when you don't practice patience when you don't have that if you want these immediate results there's no way that you're going to be able to yes. get them and sustain them afterwards there right. has to be patience and i always tell people right. stop thinking about the short term and one of my questions to them always is let's just fast forward you know a year or even six months and just you know even right now if you're on your journey to to losing weight or body fat just stop for a minute and just just answer this question in your head or write it down right now. If, if we were having a conversation six months from today and we're looking back on those six months and we're, we're looking at how just awesome they were, how, how, how great you did, what does success look like to you? And, and what does it mean for you to have made positive progress? Right. And a lot of times when I ask that question, it really shapes people's perspective when it's like, well, I want to lose 20 pounds and that's my goal. And then when I ask that question <laughs> that I just asked the audience here, yeah. It shifts and it's like, well, for me to feel happy with my progress in six months, I think if I were, well, you know, if I were 10 or 15 pounds lighter and to be honest, if I was just consistent and feeling better. Great. So that's your actual goal. And now that we that's have identified that you've given yourself the grace to get there over X amount of time. Right. You know, I'm not saying we have right. to be complacent with achieving goals. I'm all about, mm -hmm. you know, pushing the envelope and making sure that we're making strides and, and making positive progress. Right. But it doesn't mean it can be at the expense of taking so much action and trying to push the envelope so hard and so fast that it comes as a result of crash dieting and things that Absolutely. aren't sustainable in the long term. And um, I, I like your question or that you ask about over six months because it's not each day. We want to look at several days or weeks, six months. It's so you don't have to be perfect. Dieting and, and weight loss plans are not perfect. And mm -hmm. so every day, just do your best and, and learn your habits and, and 
move forward. So any tips, Michelle, now that we've covered some of the, the why hopefully no one watching will do crash dieting, what are some tips they can kind of take away to say, where do I go from here? How do I create some type of like sustainable plan right, for myself? Right. Where do I start? Well, so you need to find an eating plan that works for you, right? You need to find one that you can change your habits, get new habits, and keep going forward with them. So whatever works that you can learn about portion sizes and learn how to eat whole foods and take your habits to make them better, yep. to improve them. Perfect. And it's patience. Just have patience. Yeah. It yeah. took time to put that weight on. It takes time to take it off and keep it off because you don't want to go back. And I find uh, so. another thing also, so hopefully you guys grab some great tips right there. One of the things I uh, love that we try to help clients with is taking the, re the restriction off of what diets always have. And it's like, okay, yeah. instead, of, instead of saying I can't, have X, yeah. Y, or Z, which I feel a lot of time leads to rebellion. Yeah. And uh, yeah. like, you know what? They said I can't. I'm gonna have that piece of cake, and it's gonna be delicious. <laughs> it's just making sure that okay, you can still have that. Everything. But did you need a quarter of it as your right. slice, or could you right. could you do with the sliver and just a bite of the ice cream? You know, we're yeah. gonna enjoy birthday parties and weddings and all Absolutely. these various beautiful events and vacations with throughout all our food. years. It can all work. Exactly. It, it can, can all, all it work. can all work. All right. Thank so, you. This is great. I appreciate you being here and sharing yeah, all this knowledge with us. That was great. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, digital learning experience all about uh, the dangers of crash dieting and what to do about it. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks. So for those of you that, watch, that are watching, we covered a lot of ground today. If you'd like more tips or strategies or just information about how to improve the way you eat, please check out our blog at method3fitness.com. Uh, and while you're there, if you want to check out information about our program, Thriving 35, you can do so and grab some information there. Talk to you soon. Thanks.